Exponents and the exponent rules are something that I've alluded to numerous times in previous videos, so now it's about time that we actually talked about them. And for the purpose of the SAT, there's no logarithms, so you don't need to know the log rules, but you do need to know the exponent rules, and you do need to know how to manipulate them. And again, just like with so many other parts of the SAT, if, if there's something that you're very comfortable with, and if there's something you can work with really quickly, it'll help you so much, not only in terms of accuracy, but also in terms of speed. So first, let's just talk about exponents. Let's take something like x to the 3. We can just simply rewrite them. This is just a shorthand. This exponent notation is just shorthand for x times x times x. And we can always rewrite any exponent in terms of this long form. We just use exponents because it's quicker, it's shorter, it's more convenient. Uh, if we have something like x to the minus 3, and this doesn't come up too much, but it's something you should know for the SAT, uh, if not for you know your math classes. When you have a negative exponent, this is just the same thing as taking this guy, taking the reciprocal of this guy, and making the exponent positive. So this is just 1 over x to the 3. And you can generalize this, you know, x to the minus a is just 1 over x to the a, where a is, you know, any number you want. Uh, so that won't come up much, but it is something important to know. Some other definitions, let me label this definitions. x to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1, that's just the way it is. Um, if you have a fractional exponent, so let's say x to the, I don't know, 3 halves. Uh, yeah, 3 halves. This is just going to be, well, let's actually start with 1 half. A fractional exponent is actually going to turn into a radical with the number on the denominator of the fraction in of, uh, as the radical, I don't know what the term is, it's probably got a fancy term, but basically if it's a 2, it's a square root. If it's x to the 1 third, it's going to be a cube root. If it's x to the 1 fourth, it'll be a fourth root, and so on. Now if you have something like x to the 3 halves, this is just the same thing as the square root of x to the 3, and you can leave it like that. Um, let me see if there's anything else of interest. Well, how about, here's a tricky one. How about x to the minus 5 over two, 3? What would that be? Well, let's break it up piece by piece. This is just 1 over x to the 5 thirds, which is just 1 over the cube root of x to the 5th. Now, I it's going to be very rare that you'll ever see anything of this complexity on the SAT, but if you understand this, then you've got fractional exponents and you're all good. One quick shorthand is x to the 1 half is square root of x. Just keep that in mind because you might see x to the 1 half. Okay, now, we've talked about exponents and definitions. Let's talk about the exponent rules. And these are just the ways to manipulate exponents uh, in, in shorter manners. So let's talk about x to the 2 times x to the 5. Oh, that's a b. What is that? Well, the rule for adding is you add the exponents. This is just x to the 7. And why do we do that? Well, x to the 2 is just x times x by that definition above. And x to the 5 is just x times x times x times x times x. Well, we can actually combine these all together into x times x times x times x times x times x. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times x. And now, how many we've got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we can use the same definition to just call this x to the 7. So the shortcut is, when you multiply exponents, they've got to have the same base. You can add the exponents. Now, how about dividing? Let's say, in general, x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b. Now, something like dividing x to the 8 divided by x to the 2. If you, th or two. If you think it's x to the 4, you're ahead of yourself a little bit. Because again, in this case, just like with multiplying, we added. When we divide, we actually subtract. This is x to the sixth. And the reason is you're going to have x times x times x. Let me just write these out without saying it because it's going to get annoying. And now I've got x to the sixth over x to the two. I can cancel out two. And what have I got on top? Oh, this should be eight times x times x. And I've got eight on the top, two on the bottom. So I get rid of two. I'm left with six on the top. And there you go, x to the sixth. Um, and the general formula for this is x to the a over x to the b is x to the a minus b. Last one will be powers. Let's say we had x to the sixth all to the tooth power, second power. For this, you just multiply the exponents. So this is x to the twelfth. Why do we do this? Well, x to the sixth squared is just the same thing as x to the sixth times x to the sixth, right? By the exponent rules. This is the same as x. I'm not going to say this because it's kind of annoying. Uh, so 6x is here, times 6 more x's. Okay, And then we can combine these 12x's just to be x to the 12th. 
And the general formula for this is going to be x to the a, all raised to the b, is x to the a, b. And those are pretty much the exponent rules that you need to know uh, for the SAT, and you need to be familiar with and conversant with them. Uh, if this is something you can manage and you're, you understand these, you know how to work with them, then you'll be able to get a lot of those exponent questions right.